So Everett, um, basically you're you're trying to say that um, we know that a law of logic is valid, or we know we've made a correct inference when we get this this feeling. We have this this epistemic ecstasy of some sort, which uh, tells us that we are that we're right, and that's how we know when we're feeling good. Um, I I'm going to agree with you. If you think that is how you tell when something is correct or not, or whether you've made a correct inference or not, there's no hope. There's no getting away from the the skeptical outlook. Okay. Um, but I don't think that's the case. All right. I don't think that. Um, we have this buzzing feeling inside of us, and that that tells us when we're on to something. Um, and that's not how it works. Um, you ask the question, okay, how do you know that a law of logic is correct? And uh, furthermore, how do you know that you correctly applied a law, a law of logic? And um, the answer is, you know, you frequently don't know that, right? Um, the laws of logic are just like any other laws. Okay, they evolve, they change. Uh, we adopt them, we, we reject them according to our own devious purposes. Okay, let me give you an example. Okay, just to set the ball rolling. Okay, first of all, it's like you know, um, the laws of logic. There's a specific person who invented this whole thing, right? Okay, we we know his name. His name was Aristotle, right? Came up with the first set of of laws of logic, and one of his laws was goes like the following okay if you know, if you can assert that all men are mortal you can conclude that there are some men who are mortal right if all men are mortal then there are some men who are mortal seems like a perfectly valid rational uh, law of logic and uh, you know you might get a buzzy feeling saying yeah you're right if of course if all men are mortal then there are some men who are mortal sure that goes without saying right well in point of fact, today we don't uh, we don't adopt this law of logic anymore. We have rejected this law of logic, okay? And uh, the reason is, okay, let's take it instead of men and mortality, let's take it for unicorns and, and having a horn, right? So if you say, you know, all unicorns have a single horn, to there are some unicorns who have a single horn. In other words, there are some unicorns, right? So... <laughs> You know, we don't adopt this law of logic anymore because it leads to results which we find to be absurd. You know, and in fact, ever since, um, you know, Google proved this, right? Okay, we, we cannot know that any particular set of laws of logic or anything else, we cannot know whether or not that set leads to absurdity or not, irregardless of whatever buzzing feelings that we are having inside of our heads. Okay, so... Um, yeah, that's just the quandary we're in in terms of, of laws of logic, okay? So, you know, where does our sense of, of validity come from? Where do we get these laws of logic? Um, you know, short answer is, you know, we get them the same way that we get any other law. We try them out. If they work, then we go with them until they stop working. And then we scramble around and try to find something else, okay? Long answer is, okay, get this book, okay? Wittgenstein... On Rules in Private Language by Saul A. Kripke. Kripke is one scary, smart motherfucker. Okay, get this book and read this book until you are one with it, okay? And after you do that, uh, get the book Philosophical Investigations by Ludwig Wittgenstein and um, read that one until you are one with it. And that will be a, a longer answer to your question. <clears throat>